laser is a relatively new invention, but its development really started at the beginning of the 20th century. As early as 1917, Albert Einstein developed a theory for stimulated emission of radiation. However, the first laser was not built until 1960. The real breakthrough as regards the industrial application of lasers came in the beginning of the 1980s. The number of laser applications has grown enormously over the past decade, and this trend is expected to continue into the 90s. Nowadays, lasers are used for cutting, welding and marking. They also find uses in communication, in measurement technology, in medicine. The range of applications stretches from the automotive sector to integrated circuit production. In this film, we will concentrate mainly on cutting using a CO2 laser. Materials processing with a CO2 laser consumes gas. A laser gas is necessary to generate the laser radiation. For cutting and welding, a process or assist gas is also required. The carbon dioxide laser or CO2 laser is the laser type which is most often used for cutting of metals and other materials. The laser light is generated via an electrical discharge in a gas-filled glass tube. Two mirrors, one of which is partially transmitting, make up the ends of the tube. The laser is filled with a gas mixture in which carbon dioxide is the laser active gas. The other gases are helium and nitrogen. However, the laser gas mixture contains only about 5% carbon dioxide. The major constituent in the laser gas is helium, which, thanks to its good thermal conductivity, facilitates heat removal. This is vital because 80 to 90 percent of the electrical energy which is pumped into the laser is dissipated as heat. Nitrogen is also an important component of the laser gas. About 15 percent is normally present. Nitrogen's role is to assist the carbon dioxide molecules in attaining the desired vibrational state. The laser radiation is generated as a result of transitions between different vibrational states of the carbon dioxide molecules. The laser light is amplified by reflection between the mirrors in the laser cavity and finally leaves the cavity via the partially transparent mirror as a laser beam. This beam is transmitted over some distance which may be short or quite long depending on the type of system. Finally, it reaches the processing head where it's focused to a small spot by means of lenses or mirrors. Laser gases must be of high purity, often 99.995% or better. The quality requirements are thus stringent, not only on the gas in the cylinders, but also on the gas distribution system. Regulators should be of a type designed especially for high purity gases, at the same time as the piping system should be constructed from metal tube, stainless steel for example. Furthermore, the installation should be made by properly trained people who know exactly how to handle and fit the components. Undesirable impurities which enter the laser cavity may well result in loss of power, uneven performance and reduced service life for vital optical components. By the end of 1989, almost 10,000 CO2 lasers will be processing materials around the world. Most of these will be used for laser cutting. What particular advantages does the laser offer for cutting? First of all, most materials can be processed. Metals, wood, plastics, cloth, etc.
complicated shapes with very small radii can be cut with excellent precision and quality and with a minimum of waste. And since the heat from the laser beam is highly concentrated, there is little or no distortion of the cut parts. In general, the maximum thickness which can be cut by laser is about 10 millimeters for metals and roughly 50 millimeters for other non-metallic materials. Gas cutting and plasma cutting normally find application for thicknesses above 10 millimeters. So there's little competition between these methods and laser cutting in processing steel, for example. Laser cutting is primarily an alternative to mechanical methods such as punching, blanking or nibbling. Although laser welding has hitherto not enjoyed the same rapid growth as laser cutting, a considerable increase in the number of CO2 lasers for welding is predicted in the near future. Laser welding is characterized by high precision combined with small heat-affected zones and little distortion. The welds are narrow and have good penetration and excellent appearance. A single run is normally sufficient. Welding can be performed at high speed to give a metallurgically clean weld metal with good properties. Consumables are normally not required. The main drawback with laser welding is that it requires very careful joint preparation and fixturing. Laser welding is normally achieved via the so-called keyhole mechanism. The pressure from vaporized metal creates a tunnel through the melt. Molten material is forced backwards from the front to the back side of the keyhole and forms the weld. An important and fast-growing application for laser welding is in the production of automotive transmission and motor components. Laser welding is also being considered by many automotive companies as an alternative to spot welding for body assembly. A process or assist gas is necessary for both laser cutting and laser welding. This gas is introduced at the laser processing head. An important function of the process gas is to protect the sensitive optics in the laser head from fume and spatter. The cutting gas must remove molten material and vapor from the narrow cut kerf. In addition, the cutting gas may contribute to the cutting process via exothermic reaction with the metal being cut. This is normally the case when oxygen is used as cutting gas. For materials where oxidation of the cut surfaces is undesirable, such as stainless steel or aluminium, an inert cutting gas such as nitrogen or argon can be used to advantage. There is no exothermic reaction when argon or nitrogen is used. The loss of the exothermic contribution to the cutting speed is compensated for by increasing the gas pressure to obtain more efficient expulsion of molten material from the kerf. The principal role of the shielding gas in laser welding is to protect the weld from contamination by the air. We normally use inert gases such as helium, argon or nitrogen. A laser, together with its associated materials processing system, represents a considerable investment. Thus, the level of utilization must be high in order to achieve acceptable profitability. In practice, this means that efficient materials handling is just as important as a well-functioning cutting or welding system. Rapid materials handling systems such as high-speed fixturing devices or duplicated cutting tables should be used to ensure minimum dead time for the laser. CNC technology is well suited for processing by laser. Most suppliers of laser systems can offer highly sophisticated solutions, both as regards designing the parts using CAD, as well as CNC control of laser beam and or workpiece. Even here, it's important that the CAD work can be performed offline, without disturbing the operation of the laser. There are a number of different types of laser systems on the market. For cutting of sheet, two-dimensional cutting systems are used, where either the cutting head moves relative to a stationary workpiece, a so-called flying optics system, or where the cutting head remains still and the workpiece is translated.
Cutting of complicated three-dimensional shapes requires even more advanced control systems, involving linear or rotational motion of the laser head in up to five different modes. In the future, an increased use of lasers and robots in combination can be anticipated, especially for laser welding. A one kilowatt CO2 laser with an advanced five-axis control system has recently been installed at Volvo's research and development department in Gothenburg. The equipment is used mainly for cutting of prototype or zero-series parts for automotive bodies. The advanced CAD system can be used to generate three-dimensional cutting paths. In this way, a designer can achieve short lead times between concept and finished prototype part. At Volvo, we have invested in this laser system principally because we wanted to explore the possibilities of laser processing. We arrived rapidly at the conclusion that, for us, the main area of interest was laser cutting of prototype parts. The great advantage is the time saving compared with the traditional hand methods. It is, of course, too expensive to make a special tool in order to produce prototype parts which may be subject to design changes. Take this part as an example. A series of 11 such parts would take about 25 hours by hand. Using the laser, we can reduce the time to roughly two hours, a 23 hours saving for producing 11 parts. And this is a very simple part. If we talk about large, complicated three-dimensional parts in short series, then we can gain man months of time. What we have done is to shorten the time it takes to develop new models at Volvo. This is very important for our future competitiveness. Electrolux Techno Details in Stockholm use laser cutting in prototype production in about the same way as Volvo do. A short lead time for product development and a rapid adaption to new trends is just as important for household products as it is for cars. Electrolux run a 1.5 kilowatt laser with an advanced 5-axis system and state-of-the-art CAD and CNC possibilities. The laser is also used as a research tool in order to evaluate the possibilities to use laser processing for the everyday production within the Electrolux group. Westling's laser technique in Vansbro manufacture wood saw blades of various types and even carry out subcontract laser cutting. Westlings run three lasers of between 1.5 and 2.5 kilowatts, which are used exclusively for cutting of sheet material. Eighty percent of the material processed by us is carbon steel. Fifteen percent is stainless, and the rest comprises plastic, aluminium, or wood. We work in the thickness range 0.6 to 15 millimeters. The demand for our subcontract laser cutting is increasing, and we plan to purchase an additional laser system. Laser materials processing was applied very early on by Westlings, who quickly realized the possibilities in saw blade manufacture. Such products are particularly suitable to be cut by laser because of the many sharp corners. Arga have helped us to install a new gas distribution system. One part of the new installation is a liquid oxygen tank which delivers high purity cutting gas. This possibility has enabled us to increase our productivity by on average 12%. BT is one of the world's leading producers of equipment for materials handling. Since most of BT's products are made of steel sheet and the series lengths are relatively short, cutting with laser offers a superior production economy. 
BT run two CO2 lasers with 1.5 kilowatt power. The high quality of laser cut surfaces is particularly important at BT because the cut pieces are often subsequently welded together. The laser is fed by an automatic sheet handling system, which means that laser downtime for changing of sheets and removal of cut pieces and scrap is kept to a minimum. Bistronic Laser is located in the western part of Switzerland. This company is a highly successful producer of quality CO2 lasers and advanced laser systems for cutting and welding. Bistronic Lasers are rated at 1.0 and 1.5 kilowatts. The materials handling system permits efficient laser operation via a double cutting table arrangement, whereby new sheets can be loaded and parts removed whilst the laser is operating. Mystronic's new three-dimensional laser system allows rotation of workpieces as well as movement of the cutting head in two directions. Hence, quite advanced three-dimensional cutting and welding operations can be performed. Changing between the cutting and welding head is particularly simple and can be performed with a minimum of downtime. Aga have now installed a quality gas distribution system for Bistronic's demonstration lasers and also supply Bistronic with laser gases as well as gases for cutting and welding. Laser cutting and laser welding will never completely replace other cutting and welding methods, but will, in appropriate cases, offer a superior technology as regards new manufacturing possibilities, production economy and quality. Arga is committed to the development of laser materials processing. The R&D organization within Arga is extremely active in the development of new gases and gas technology for laser applications. At the same time, research is being carried out on the process aspects of laser welding and laser cutting, with the emphasis on productivity and quality. Aga also cooperates with and provides financial support to universities and research institutes which have a high level of competence within the laser area. At Aga's training centers, an extensive laser education activity ensures that salespeople and technical support staff are well qualified to deal with problems at laser users as well as being able to give information on new developments. Aga. With its know-how on gases and gas distribution systems, coupled with an extensive experience of laser processing, is an ideal partner for both existing as well as presumptive laser users. A total commitment from Aga for materials processing with lasers. <laughs>